Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. This week we get what might be the most approved PR in Bevy history and a sneaky reminder that you too can review Bevy PRs. Even though 2190 ended up being a bit of a running joke to approve, running the examples on other PRs, trying to understand them, and asking questions is valuable work that anyone is allowed to do on a PR. Some ongoing work in first party tile maps continues in 19924, bringing color tints and visibility data, while the render startup schedule refactors and various macro improvements are also getting work done. And using Tracy for profiling can be a daunting first time topic, which 2109 improves. In the showcases, we see some interesting compute shader work for wind patterns and grass, terrain generation, and ray marching, as well as progress and updates on games like To Build a Home, Polders, and more. And let's get into it with BSN, or Bevy Scene Notation, which saw some interesting developments this week with the introduction of a draft PR put up for discussion. It's important to note that this PR is not meant to be merged, but rather is a signifier of BSN, or B Scene, as it's now officially referred to, moving into a public experimentation phase. Since this is an experimental draft PR, I am going to make you read the PR for details. It is quite long, and if you're interested, you should definitely read all of it. In turn, we'll do an overview of the functionality in the future when the features start merging. There is, however, a lot of really great stuff in here, like template, impulse scene, and the B scene macro. And then we've got something I really wasn't expecting to see this week. This is an experimental Bevy web video crate that was able to introduce the ability to stream video assets to a texture. This is a particularly exciting development. There is a web demo playing Big Buck Bunny on a cube, and WGPU seems to be adding support for GPU external texture, which will increase the performance of this approach on the web. If you're looking for something that already exists that you can use today, check out Blue Kinetoscope. And with that, we're moving on to 18552, which makes angle-weighted smooth normals the default implementation. This method weights normals by the angles of the corners of the connected triangles, as you can see in this image, thus eliminating triangle area and count as factors in the final normal. The difference can be seen here in this exaggerated example, which has a couple other images as well if you're interested. And if you're interested in the code level explanation, the code here has some great comments, so I highly suggest that you go check them out, and some nice ASCII visualizations as well. And following that up with some more math is 20082, which introduces sampling implementations for rhombus. This is specifically an implementation of shape sample, which includes boundary and interior sampling. And using the readback component allows reading information from the GPU, such as an image or a buffer. You can see how this is currently used in the shader GPU readback example. Uh, be sure to check the release 0.16.1 branch if you're looking for what it looks like in the current release, and the main branch if you're looking for this new functionality. Previously, this approach only allowed full reads of the buffer, but 2133 enables using an offset to read partial data. This is already being used in the wild to read back terrain generated on the GPU to create colliders, as you can see here. And I feel like fixed time step is always an interesting concept for people who are unfamiliar with game development. And moving a camera in the context of using fixed time steps can be more complicated than it first appears, as it includes factors like if the camera affects the direction of the character or the physics simulation. So when should the camera rotate or translate relative to fixed time step work? 20089 ports an example to the 3D to explain the details. And in 2020, we've got single bounce ray traced global illumination, which is an initial implementation of Restir GI. Given the nature of this work, the noise and image compression have significant effects on the image displayed in the issue on the website and in the video. So if you're interested in an accurate representation of what this looks like in practice, definitely go run the code yourself. And Alice's Merge Train is a maintainer level view into active PRs and how the Bevy sausage is made. So if you're interested in diving into PRs that haven't yet merged, definitely go follow Alice. And that brings us to our showcase. This is a small demo showcasing multi-level pathfinding with a winding set of stairs. And Rockrun is an old school 2D platformer that recently closed the version gap and upgraded to Bevy 0.16. If you're interested, definitely go check it out on itch.io. An update to Nano 9 means it can run the original stenographically encoded Celeste Pico 8 PNG cart, which is a whole mouthful, directly from the website. And this is some UI for something that looks vaguely Minecrafty. This is fmc.gg, and the UI is based on a video by Juxtaposed. And next up for To Build a Home, this is roof hiding as players walk into and out of buildings. Before quickly moving on to isometric pathfinding, this is a prototype 3D isometric tile map support for Bevy North Star, which is a hierarchical pathfinding crate. And this is some interesting progress on wind displacement shaders for vegetation and grass using manually GPU instanced grass. The end goal here is to have the same wind system affect high-end foliage assets with features like complex normals, SSAO, as well as procedurally generated and predefined geometry while still allowing the individual tweaking of assets. 
And then we've got some custom DJ software that has all the basics of an FLX4 controller working, analyzing tracks, BPM, key, metadata, and more. Multiple audio files can be drag and dropped onto this and analyzed in the background. And here's some compute shader based terrain generation and rendering for a rocket game. I believe this is the same game that needed the partial GPU readback. So here's a larger look at the in-game world. And then we've got a simple compute shader ray marcher showing off domain repetition. This kind of repetition is something that SDFs tend to be really, really good at. So it's not uncommon to see them pop up in demos. And here's a little voxel game called Sunny Shores. This combines the aesthetics of 3D lo-fi and the creative freedom of a block-based sandbox. Hunt, fish, forage, build, and craft to survive in an infinite open world. You can currently grab a small playtest of this over on Itch. And here's some progress on a 2D platformer that includes torches flickering to give a more fire-like look, and of course the levels gained new detail. And then we've got another small demo. This seems to be a small power system. It seems to be for providing electrical power to resources. As you can see, the different tools here are power, wire, and it's always exciting to see a polders update. This is an update based on the vegetation that we saw last week, and that is the grass and vegetation shaders. And the source recording here is actually a uh, camera shot of a computer. This is a Pac-Man demo made to engage with the bevy examples and work with a 2D environment. And Boyd's are always fun. Boyd's a simulation and a physics engine for a university project, featuring normal Boyd's, which are the green, Boyd testing units, blue, Predator Boyd's, which are red, and a uniform grid searching other Boyd's in neighboring cells. And UI is always interesting when people are getting into the deeper depths of it. These are bevy UI based tabs in a settings page with serialization. And getting close to the end here, we've got a voxel generation for this world gen, which has a fly cam showing off the terrain generation. And finally, some basic world shading. This is a shader that uses surface normals to blend between two textures. And that brings us into the crates. This is Lightyear 0.22. Lightyear is a full featured networking library for bevy and 0.22 brings a huge upgrade to the rollback logic. There's a lot of detail here and a tutorial to check out, so definitely go dig if you're interested in networking. And Queue Service is somewhat of an interesting crate. It aims to bring a service model to Bevy. The crate is loosely modeled after System D, and while it doesn't manage PID1, it does manage user services, including those necessary for startup. Services are defined as resources which have built-in state, associated data, and managed dependencies. This crate extends the Bevy ECS to include this functionality. And if you're familiar with Typist, you may already know what Bevy Typist Textures does, which is provide a resource for generating rasterized textures out of either standalone .typ files or structured zipped Typist projects. If you're unfamiliar with Typist, it's actually a layout tool similar to LaTeX. That is very, very, very nice. I use it quite a bit myself for scripting and PDF generation. Bevy Light 2D got a release. This is a general purpose 2D lighting plugin. 0.7 brings a new light 2D marker component that it serves to allow enabling and disabling lighting, which is now exemplified by a new minimap example. And Moonshine Framework v0.4 had a release. This is not just one crate, but a whole ecosystem of crates. And it's self-described as an unconventional cocktail of libraries that do a number of different things, including providing state machines, save and loading logic, and more. And that is it for this week. As always, as we mentioned at the beginning, Definitely go check out the list of PRs on the website if you want to get involved and do some review. Go check out the GitHub repo for Bevy if you want to do some review and get involved. And I will see you next week.